from one and done to one win away from one shining moment. Purdue advances to the national championship. Braden Smith, his only field goal of the game. He was one of nine, but he was clutch in that spot as Purdue wins it 63 to 50, advancing to the second national title game in school history. They lost in 1969. Here they are in 2024. One win away from their first ever national championship. For the Wolfpack, they pack it up and go home. A valiant effort, dealt with some issues with Michael O'Connell injury in the first half, and they could never really get going. DJ Burns with just eight points, DJ Horn had 20, and the nine-game winning streak for NC State is over. The dream continues for Purdue. Game inside State Farm Stadium alongside our 70,000 closest fans and friends. Avery Johnson, Tim Doyle, Hakeem Dermish. What a performance by Purdue, Avery. Your instant reaction is what from what you saw from the Boilermakers? Well, Zach Eady, he was the kryptonite to D.J. Burns. We talked about it in the pregame. D.J. Burns hadn't played against a center of this magnitude. One that he can't back down. Another that he can't shoot over and basically got in foul trouble. He had three fouls uh, early in the game. He looked tired just the first five minutes of the game. So that's one thing that stuck out. And then the last uh, part of the first half and the beginning of the second half, North Carolina State missed 16 out of 17 jump shots. Yeah. They couldn't score inside. Yeah, they went on a three and a half minute drought. Because of Eden. Strange game. Bizarre. Ugly. Let's just call it what it was. I mean, NC State couldn't make a shot. They couldn't make a three. They couldn't get the ball on the inside. DJ Horn played great. And he didn't have a lot of other help. As far as the difference in this game, Zach Eady, 20 points, 12 rebounds. Thought Lance Jones made some amazing shots defensively. He was outstanding. But I'm not sure, Akeem. NC State could play any worse. They were that bad. And in the second half, Coach, they couldn't throw it in the ocean, but Edie, he was fantastic. I thought Burns did a pretty good job on him, though. And then I think the key also was Zach, when he really got used to where those double teams were coming from, from North Carolina State, they stripped him a couple of times. It was coming off the passer. North, uh, Purdue made a nice adjustment at halftime. They started cutting the passer through when he made the pass in the post, and they ended up shooting 40% from the three-point line. Well, and they did it. They won this game after double-digit turnovers because we're watching early in the second half, and I look at Tim and I go, that's number 12. And if they're going to lose this game, it's going to be based on turnovers. They're able to absorb what NC State didn't have and still win this game despite double-digit turnovers. They didn't take care of the ball. If NC State plays better, they, they might have might have won this game. They played about as bad as you could have played. Michael O'Connell getting banged up. Yeah. When you lose your point guard, look like they had no real rhythm at all on offense the entire game. And then NC State, you have a guy that averages 11 points a game. He goes scoreless in the game. That's, that's a significant loss. But again, with NC State, they had two big guys, and they can't shoot threes. So you need to have a curveball to try to attack Zach Eady. that when you go to your bench, your backup center is more of a stretch five. Both of them are inside players. It never really brought Zach Eady out. He, he came out early in the game, and DJ Burns hit DJ Horn for a backdoor. But when you don't have guys that can shoot the ball, Edie's just going to stand that one man zone. Yeah, uh, 20 points, 12 rebounds. He's the first player with 20 points and 10 rebounds in six straight NCAA tournament games. Uh, that's incredible. That's in the last 50 years of what he has done. Two-time National Player of the Year. And think about his supporting cast. You mentioned Lance Jones, Fletcher Lawyer. But how about Braden Smith? He made one field goal this whole entire game. He was one of nine. Yeah, it looked like the guards of NC State, their athleticism was really giving him issues as far as from an offensive perspective. He rebounded the ball well. He distributed well. He's definitely their glue guy. I thought Gillis made some shots. Buckets were at a premium in this game uh, for Purdue, but they won every statistical category. They really dominated. But in the second half, you're right, Tim. Gillis and also Jones made back-to-back -back threes, yep. and that, that pretty much, I called it ball game.
team on those on those two shots. How did NC State struggle against that double team when Purdue was able to get the ball inside to Edie? He kicks it out, knocked down the three. Well, we talked about it. We thought Horn and DJ Burns needed to combine for 45 yep. or more points. 28. Yeah, so they basically eliminated DJ Burns from the game. Straight eliminated. And then in the first half, remember, North Carolina State didn't even attempt the free throw. They did not. In the first half. Right. They didn't first half was odd. There was no yeah, DJ foul. Burns got a weird, ridiculous foul early on. Yeah. And then there was no break in action. Right. They played like almost nine straight minutes up and down the floor. Uh, Would just, you have called a timeout? Absolutely. So oh. Kevin Keats need to have called a timeout yeah. there. Yeah, call a timeout. DJ Seven. Burns wasn't even running. No. Uh, it was just, uh, this game was right if NC State would have played relatively well. They played the worst game they have played in probably two months. They, this game, Purdue was not great out there. Purdue was, I would say was Purdue was average. Yeah, but the play of Purdue against NC State, let me make a bold declaration. If they play the same way they played against NC State against the winner of this next game, they lose by 12. Totally. You, totally. you cannot. They didn't really play great. They didn't take care of the ball. No. Zach Eady struggled sometimes early in the second half with those double teams. Um, when you turn the ball over, and especially against teams that convert, convert quickly and make you pay for your mistakes, they can't play this way on Monday night. What did Purdue do well in this game? I mean, we're going to obviously yeah. pick them apart, but what did they do well? I thought they gave up no easy baskets, right? It felt like every time NC State scored, it was like, wow, they actually scored. Or it was Horn making a mid-range jumper or making a difficult two. I mean, I didn't think they were going to break 50. I didn't think they were going to break 40 at one point. Yeah. I mean, they went a really long stretch. Uh, Purdue banged down 10 threes. And, Coach, what was the – the reason for their success from three. Well, I think the spacing. And when you have, look at the spacing here. That is wonderful spacing. And you got a big guy that can pass the basketball. The ball had a lot of energy. It always, for the most part, on their quality possessions, found the right man. But spacing the floor, you should be able to pass the ball out with a blindfold because you know where your teammates are going to be on the floor. They reach the title game for just the second time in school history. This is the narrative that Purdue wants to rewrite, that they lost to a 16 seed, win it all, now one win away from a national championship. And you talked about whoever they face in this next game, whether it's UConn, whether it's Alabama, what do they have to shore up? Well, first of all, is ball security, because in this next game on Monday night, they trying to reduce your turnovers to 10 or less. Uh, these teams are dangerous offensively. Uh, Connecticut and Alabama both, they'll put up 90 on you in a heartbeat. And, you know, you talking about Edie playing against Klingon or he's playing against a Grant Nelson, that's a different style than playing against just D.J. Burns. Grant can knock down the three, and then you look at Klingon, 7-2. He can defend Edie inside and score over him much more officially than D.J. Burns. Well, it's interesting because Alabama matched up with Purdue. That was a game that was played in Canada. Purdue ended up winning, but Alabama made 19 threes yeah. because Zach Eady probably wants to see clean because he don't want to be out on the perimeter chasing shooters from Alabama. You understand what I'm saying? Like, he's more comfortable going up against a traditional big down low. I thought Purdue was below average in this game, or just average, and you know, hats off to them. They gave up no easy baskets. They made NC State earn every basket, but NC State, they could not make a shot, and if you shoot sub-25% from three, you're not going to win in college basketball. Well, we do need to give some credit to NC State, the run that they had to yep. get here, nine wins in a row. Everybody counted them out. They won five games in five days they were trying to pull off a UConn you you talk about Purdue trying to pull off a Virginia NC State was trying to pull off a UConn win five games in five days and win it all because we saw that happen before with Kemba Walker that was incredible and what 
they did, what they were able to do to capture America and the hearts of college basketball fans, how would you describe the run that Kevin Keats and his kids had? Uh, a Cinderella run. He, he had an incredible season. They were on the make, brink of a season of disaster, and they went on a 9-0 run, losing in the Final Four. This is definitely going to help recruiting. And when you're talking about, you know, players that want to transfer uh, in the play for North Carolina State, I think this is uh, going to bode well for them moving forward, Tim. Yeah, I mean, Kevin Keats keeps his job. Uh, this is a team that gelled late in the year. See UCLA, Loyola, Chicago, VCU, George Mason, LSU, all 11 seeds. I think you're going to see more teams because of the transfer. And teams are going to gel later. So you're going to see more teams in that 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 seed late in the year. Pull it together because you're trying to blend so many different talents and try to find that cohesion. They didn't find their cohesion until the ACC Conference Tournament. Heck of a run by the NC State Wolfpack, but they got to pack it up and head back to Raleigh as they fall short in the first national semifinal to Purdue, who now has 49 NCAA tournament wins, most without a title, and now one win away from a title and their 50th NCAA tournament win, which would be their biggest win of all time. Coming up, a man who knows a thing or two about winning, Rip Hamilton is in the building, won a title with UConn in 1999. He was in Houston when they won last year. He's here in Arizona trying to cheer him on to back-to-back -to -back titles when we come back on CBS Sports HQ.